What's up guys? Can you calculate the equilibrium constant, KEQ, if you're given the delta G, the change in Gibbs free energy for that reaction at a certain temperature? The answer is you definitely can. Delta G is related to KEQ via delta G equals negative RT ln K, where T is the temperature in Kelvin and R is the gas constant which, if you're doing a question like this, you should be familiar with. At 2000 Kelvin, a certain reaction has a delta G of 5.08, that's positive 5.08 kilojoules per mole. What is KEQ for the reaction at this temperature? Given this mathematical relationship, we can rearrange and get an equation for KEQ. It is a very common equation that you might as well memorize to move the negative RT to the other side, you simply divide, and to get rid of the natural logarithm, you raise both sides, like you do e to the power of both sides. Thus, the equation we're looking for is e to the power of negative delta G divided by RT. Now you're gonna have to do this whole thing on your calculator first, and then raise e to the power of that number. I will do this example for you to show you what's up. Oh. Camera went out of focus there. All right, oh no, I dropped my marker too. All right, we have KEQ equals e to the power of negative delta G over RT. That's e to the power of negative. Now, the gas constant I'm familiar with is 8.314 and it is in joules per mole Kelvin. So I want this, uh, joules per, yeah, joules per mole Kelvin is right. So I want delta G in joules, and it is currently in kilojoules. So I'm going to convert it. That's 5080 joules per mole, divided by R, which is 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. And in addition, in the denominator, I need the temperature in Kelvin, which is 2000. And there we are. Ah, oh, damn, lens focusing. Okay. Let's do this on the calculator. We have, let's hold this so you can see it too. That's negative 5080 divided by 8.314 and also again divided by 2000. That's how I put both those things in the denominator on my calculator at least. I end up with negative 0.3055. So, what I have here is e to the power of negative 0.3055. I like lots of decimal places on this number because a small difference in the exponent makes a big difference in your KEQ later. And on my calculator, I actually have a button. It's written in orange here, if you can see it, e to the power of. So, I'm simply going to do shift ln for e to the power of and then press my answer button. So I pre reuse the previous answer and don't lose any decimal places. That gives me 0 0.737, if I round it. 0 0.737, which kind of makes sense. Oh, damn, that focusing. Um, which kind of makes sense because for a positive delta G, the reaction is non-spontaneous. And in general, KEQs that are less than one favor the reactants, i.e. they are less likely to go forward. Huh? So KEQ and delta G do relate to each other via this equation, and it is pretty easy to interconvert the two. Last thing I want to point out is that we made sure the units canceled out perfectly. The per moles canceled here, joules canceled with joules because I converted kilojoules per mole into joules per mole before I did the calculation and my Kelvin times one over Kelvin also canceled. It gives me a unitless quantity, which we usually assume KEQ is. I understand KEQ is based on concentrations, but overall we consider it to be unitless. Cool? Cool. It's kind of related to the Van Hoff equation. It's calculating KEQ from delta G. Good luck in your own endeavors. I'll see if I can fix my focusing. Peace.